one of the signature issues in policing has been the militarization of police. And can you just talk a little about the roots of that, Bradley, and and how that has spilled over into a posture toward the community and and the sort of question of protect and serve versus dominate and subdue? Yeah, so you know there there are two I think two sides to police militarization. One is the the stuff, right? The the guns, the armored vehicles, the um, you know uh, bayonets, grenade launchers. Um, the other is kind of goes with it though. It's the mentality. It's this idea that um, uh, police are, have, uh, aren't so much about protecting and serving, but about uh, one phrase you always see on police bulletin boards online, if you kind of snoop around on them, is uh, whatever it takes to get home at night or whatever I have to do to get home at night. And that's a very kind of um, battlefield sort of approach to the job. Um, and and this is a huge problem. And I think what it, you know, the two prob- or the two issues are, are related, right? When you take a police officer and you dress him like a soldier and you arm him like a soldier and train him like a soldier and tell him he's fighting a war, whether it's a war on crime or drugs or you know, terrorism or Antifa, um, they're going to start to see themselves as soldiers and they're going to start to see the people that they're supposed to be protecting, not as citizens with rights, but as, you know, potential threats, as combatants. Um, and, you know, you see this kind of militaristic language among police and, and police leaders in particular all the time, um, you know, referring to beats as uh, patrols or battlefields or, um, you know, uh, referring to, you um, just a lot of sort of military jargon and it really affects the way uh, police see the community but more importantly uh, it affects the way the communities see the police right i mean if um if the if the cops are, are dressed in camouflage um you know which serves real no real purpose if, in, in policing there's no reason for cops to wear camouflage unless you know they're uh, hiding in the woods for some reason um uh but they're seen that that that, that allows them to see themselves as soldiers but it also makes the community see them as as soldiers uh and it cre- uh, creates a lot of tension uh, between police and the communities that they're supposed to be serving. Um, and I, you know, I think we see this um, just kind of in general, the, uh, the Intercept had a good piece the other day about the, uh, the Punisher uh, logo uh, that we're seeing sort of predominate in police culture. Um, I've written a lot about police t-shirts, some, you know, really striking police t-shirts you see at like police week that have, you know, the Hemingway quote about, you know, the killing of men and, and uh, you know, how in, in invigorating it is to hunt men um, you see, um, you know, uh, Grim Reaper uh, is on a lot. The Grim Reaper are, is consistently on T-shirts. SWAT teams typically have sort of unofficial emblems that are skulls and crossbones or, you know, um, executioner's axes. Um, you know, this is a, a pervasive problem in policing, uh, and it's sort of right under the, uh, under the kind of surface, but I think journalists would be good to sort of uh, dig it out. And there has been a lot of that over the last couple of years.